hard to be quiet. <laughs> it, was, it was impossible. I would say. <laughs> they told us like, not to do over mic. Hot, hot mic, hot, hot mic. Exactly. And you guys, all you could hear is, was us breathing. <laughs> hey, welcome to the show, man. Another one. Oh, this is going to be a great show. I'm telling you. Chromatography explained. It's uh, chromatography rocks. What can I say? Chromatography does rock. Yeah. High performance liquid chromatography rocks rocker. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Uh, and, you know, we've got to get all of those keywords in, right? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Name, name them all. Yeah. Chromatography, high-performance liquid chromatography, HPLC machines, HPLC basics, HPLC column, HPLC testing, chromatography column. So that's what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, told us, they told us to use those keywords, so I think we got that out of the did way. Did I slip any expletives in that? <laughs> no. Oh, no, you did really good. <laughs> yeah. Matt will be happy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, and you know who else is happy? Hey, you know, speaking of that, Matt is doing a great job. So he's, he's our guy who writes, uh, does a lot of shadow writing with our blogs and everything. He does a really great job. So he I, just does want, it. I just want to shout Apparently out to he Matt. he does it in the shadows. Is yeah, that what you're saying? Yeah, well, you know, he's kind of a low-key guy, but he, <laughs> he, he, yeah, he definitely uh, puts, he, out, the, puts and, out the words. So. And he likes to fish. He does. He yeah. does like to fish. Sturgeon and... Yeah, Matt. Uh, Matt. Woo, shout Matt. out. Okay, so you know who else is happy? Jason Ford in North Carolina, Brandy wow. Parigo in uh, Flint, Michigan, and right. Christina Emul. Congratulations. In Osceola Mills, Pennsylvania. Yep. I, Osceola, I didn't know there was another Osceola. I didn't know either. We were in Osceola, Wisconsin. Is, that's where we are. Wow, that's yeah. great. Okay. So, and we have a falls, not a mills. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't there a falls downtown? Uh, yeah, there is. Osceola. Yeah, there is. It's right on the river. Oh, cool. Anyway, they won some CBD dabs and pre-rolls. And the reason oh, for that is because we aired that live on 710. Yeah, or that's a 710 day, and uh, that's, the, that's the dab day. Dab day. Yeah, I think dab, that's right. Dab day. So, okay. whatever. Yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm kind of a dork. So, uh, and all they did is they told us a joke. They shared us on their storyline. They tagged some friends. Mm -hmm. So, it's always easy to win stuff here. Yeah, we had, uh, that's the Outlaws brand, oh. which is, uh, the, the, that's that hip-hop group. So anyway, they, they have their brand. We make it for them. Outlaws, so shout sweet. out to the Outlaws. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty awesome. Nice. Okay, so be sure to follow us on your favorite social channels and subscribe on our YouTube channel also. Lots of stuff. Live tour, CBD jam sessions, advanced extraction guide, the distillate guide. The calculators are on fire. They are. We have so many people. They're converting. Uh, in other words, they're, they're giving us their emails, and we're following up with them. What's nice about it, they have questions about the calculators and we can go, you know, we can take them, take you through it. So if you have a question about, you know, what an assumption is in the calculator or what the calculator is telling you, please give us a call, send us an email, say, hey, we'll, yeah. we'll get on the phone with you and we'll, we'll help you through it. I love it. Yeah. That's what we need to do. Make sure that we've got, you know, just get those questions in. And, and that's why, and thank you for being here, by the way, and introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us who you are, you know, whether you're a farmer, grower, whether you're an investor, whether you're a processor now, what are you doing? Who are you? Where are you around the world? Because we, we're, we're airing around the world. Yeah, we had, uh, how many attendees? We had like 85 attendees last, last week or something along those a lines. A lot. That's a lot. Yeah, I think uh, April, April said to me 263. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. All right. So, okay. So, when you're here. 263. Well, that's we what she said. We're famous. Yeah. Well, you're famous. <laughs> I'm infamous. <laughs> or infamous? No. Infamous. Infamous. Okay, that sounds better. Uh, okay, so if you're here for the first time, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a no-holds-barred Q&A session. We, we do a little presentation. We talk about a topic. And just bring your questions. Bring them. And, you know, we answer them. We've got a team that answers them online. So go ahead and do that. Introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, farmer, uh, investor, processor, what you're doing. And if you're here for the first time and your screen freezes for whatever reason, just push the red rose reconnect button at the top. Uh, it's in the center, and that'll reconnect you. It won't bounce you out, and you have to re-log in, blah, blah, blah. It'll just refresh, and you're good to go. So, chromatography explained. It's going to be good. I have been anticipating this. Uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been just rearing to go. I have, too. And you know what I learned? What would you learn? I learned that HPLC is not just the name. 
It's it's actually high performance liquid chromatography. Wow, I had no idea. <laughs> That's great. Okay, dork. You Have you ever seen a dork fan money? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I, I saw you fan money. That's <laughs> <laughs> there, we go. there you go. This is one hundred million dollars for anybody who wants to know. Yeah. One hundred million. Yeah, and we're touching it right here. Yeah, that's right. You could you can have your picture taken we use it with for this bet. fake one hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we use it for bets. We do. Well, that's exactly what we bet, don't we? Who 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 can uh, make it the longest in the Gemco? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. We uh, don't do that. Honest. <laughs> that would, HR would with have a conniption. See, see the, the, the secret is I, I don't have the heat. Oh, you got, we heat you up. What? Yeah, when you get in there, you, you cheat. Is that what yeah. you're telling me? That's what it happened. You wonder how hot you are. <laughs> it's hot in let's there. Let's see if we can get. <laughs> let's see if we can decarboxylate. <laughs> I have been decarboxylated a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and that's even hard to say. And, uh, but you can say chromatography. Yes, chromatography column. High performance liquid chromatography. <laughs> we should just add those as little buttons here. I know, right? Because this is cool. Anyway, I know you, I'm guessing, just going out on a limb, I'm guessing there's a table. There's a table. There's a table? There is a table. You did it. You guessed it. <laughs> so I, I got a presentation. I win. I get the hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't bet. It's not fair. <laughs> oh, I still get the hundred million. Oh, you can have it. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's just money. Okay. So thank you. Get your questions in. We're going to talk. I know you had some opening remarks that you wanted to talk about. Yeah. Some preamble on chromatography. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I just wanted to basically say that I'm really excited about this topic because it's uh, one of those one of those things that we've been. Um, you know, I've been. I'm a trained chromatographer. Um, it's kind of my credentials. I've been doing it for over 20 years, and um, you know, it's been a it's been a good ride. Separations of various kinds, but specifically in chromatography. So column chromatography. Happen to know a lot about it, and um, I like to kind of teach about it. So it's it's fun to do. So chromatography yeah. is your jam. Yeah, it is my jam. <laughs> right. So <laughs> has been for a long time. Is that is that like. Dr. Jam, Dr. Chromatography. Dr. Chromatography, John. Yeah. Uh, John, Johnny Chromatography. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Johnny T. Chromatography. I, I like it. <laughs> That's totally Snake going Oil down. Incorporated. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, whatever. Okay, so what I do have is, uh, is a presentation, of really? course. Yeah, well, you know, really? just to get us going. Well, so let me. Aren't we excited? Let me start. So this is only, <laughs> only like. Of 50 slides. It only takes five minutes. Don't worry. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, my, where are my sound effects? Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay, this, I'm sorry. Turn that sound effect thing <laughs> off. We got to get rid of that sound effects for you. No. Okay. They're so here. They're I got here. Em. Okay. So here Full I'm going to share. They taught me how to do new things here. I'm going to share my screen. Wow. All right. Here we go. You said you can't teach old dogs new tricks. Uh, yeah. It looks like that is it. Now. I want to make sure that I'm going to stop sharing here. One one moment here. I actually want to share an application window. That's what I want to do. All right. Share. All right. There we go. All right. So I'm going to share it. Technology. There we go. All right. Um, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to talk about chromatography. Um, United Science, as you all know, is a... Um, is a company that uh, produces uh, equipment brands, um, Pure 99, CO2 Cage, Strain Droid, Drain Droid. Track Lab, Carbon X, which is a, a nanostructured carbon material. Wow. It's uh, one of our flagship products. We started back in 2009, 2010. That's what we were doing. Wow. Uh, IGW Lab, which is a software hardware combination for, um, you know, for basically laboratory uh, limbs, which they call laboratory information management okay. and quality management. So that's that's a hot product, and uh, people are uh, subscribing. Um, people are buying the hardware. It's pretty great because it's made specifically for the hemp and for the uh, you know cannabis industries. Clear Still and Frectron; these are our distillation offerings. So we have a lot of a uh, lot of things to offer someone who wants to get into the business of hemp extraction and the pure 99 is our flagship uh chromatography product and really it's it's aimed at those people who want to do larger scale what's called preparative chromatography uh, uh you know in other words they want to take the thc out of the cbd okay 
I always ask them, what do you do with all that THC after you take it out of the CBD? And? They never say. <laughs> See, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, they never say. I, well, whatever. I, How do you think we got this $100 million? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. They're coming for us. <laughs> Come on. Okay, let me see here. I'm going to advance this thing here. Um, but it's fake. $100 million. So, uh, blast from the past. Uh, this is essentially... Uh, uh, a slide that I took out from a presentation that I gave at Canacon. Okay. I think it was in Seattle wow. in 2015. Wow. B- where BC? We, uh, BC. 2015 <laughs> BC. <laughs> and uh, this is when we were, we were, this is, this is actually in cannabis timeline. I mean, it is, I mean, it's just kind of, you know, grown and grown and grown. So it, it was, was a millennia it ago. A very, it was a long time ago. Like cannabis years, like dog years, you know, <laughs> cannabis years and human years. They're different. Okay? I love it. They're different. Anyway, okay. so we were doing this quite a while ago. Um, you know, we were um, really looking at, uh, you know, what, what, how you would really engineer a formulation. And uh, so what we decided to do was buy a big chromatography column because we are chromatographers. And we decided to start doing separations. And we were, we were separating out large amounts of uh, THC from CBD at that time. And we were putting them back together in ratios, okay? So this is what we were getting. We were getting, starting off with uh, 15% cannabinoids in a, like a de-waxed type of, uh, um, you know, winterized material. And then uh, basically using HPLC in a large scale, injecting, you know, 30 30, uh, you know, 30 grams, 40 grams at a time onto the column and then changing it up so that you'd have uh, both THC and CBD. Let's kind of advance then. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what is chromatography. Let's get right into this. Okay, chromatography is a separations technique that separates out compounds of interest into their individual components. Um, Meaning if you have, you know, different uh, components in a liquid mixture and you want to separate out uh, compound A from compound B, you can do that with a, a liquid chromatograph. Um, this right here is actually a, kind of an illustration. I think it's a movie here. Let me see if I can get it. So this is an illustration of a chromatography process. Uh, first, you have your sample in the solvent, and you put that onto the column. Uh, and most of the molecules are stuck on the column, but some of the molecules, which don't interact with the column at all, uh, are discarded in the first vessel. Um, I have it labeled there, waxes. Then they put a second solvent on there. The second solvent basically interacts more with the solvent than with the column, and they're eluded into a separate vessel. And then you add a different solvent, you add a different solvent, and CBD then interacts with that solvent more than the vessel, uh, more than the particles, and it, it goes into a second vessel. So therefore, you have a separation, and that's what's great. And, some of the gonna, and when, the you're, column, when you so. talked about the column, the chromatography column, right. is, is that kind of what we're looking at here on this slide? Is yeah. it... And so what, let, is it, what is it, the column? Let me narrate it. Okay, so yeah, I guess. Here, this is the column. You can see the little particles in there. Okay. Those are typically 5 uh, or 10 micron particles. They can be larger if you're using like a flash column. Flash columns are typically 35 to 60, 63 microns in diameter, so they're not what they call monodispersed. There's a whole different variety. Okay. If you have a column that's got like 10 micron particles, usually they're all pretty much 10 microns. Wow. So they're, that's what's called monodisperse, okay? And um, typically what they do is they pack those into a column. Now, this is all low-pressure type of column here that's being illustrated, but fundamentally um, the, the concept is the same, where you have uh, this set of eluents here or this set of analytes here, and you're trying to separate it out from this set of, of uh, analytes, and so you add it to the column, and you can see the green one stick to the column, and the red ones elute right away. So, so you're actually now eluted. They analytes. are eluted. 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 Analytes. Yeah, and you do that with this stationary and I'm phase. Harp, harp music in my head, just so you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Luted. Eluted. 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 Sorry. Eluted. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go on. Uh, so, yeah, so anyway, that, that's how that goes. So um, they're separated out as a function of time. Okay, so typically the combined equipment and technique, it's used all over the world. I mm. mean, in, in every industry you can think of, 
except for maybe technology, which is a, like, a, you know, software or stuff in the cloud. They, okay. don't, they don't really use that. But if you have something that's real, you know, like any kind of food or, um, you know, pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, mining, anything along those lines, you, you're going to be coming in contact with some sort of chromatography because people want to be able to measure and control you know, their processes. So that's exactly what's happening here. Gotcha. Um, many different types of chromatography. You got gas chromatography. GC. GC, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you use that for measuring volatiles, for example. Um, nice. You know, people would use that to measure, uh, like, solvents uh, in, in an oil, for example. Um, or liquid chromatography, they would uh, use those to measure or separate out, um, you know, different kind of analytes that are in the liquid form. And then there's thin layer chromatography. And then there's other forms of chromatography too, but I'm not going to really talk about those here. I'm going to focus on column chromatography at this point. Okay. And um, so, like I said, it's, it's distinct from membrane separations. It's distinct from liquid-liquid separations. If anybody wants to um, take a look at some presentation we made, what, three, four weeks ago mm -hmm. on different extraction techniques and... Um, all the different permutations of different extraction techniques that you could you could use and do um, you're welcome to go ahead and take a look at that uh, video so let's advance on to the next slide here um, again here's a here's a basically the same slide we saw before just to just to, just to illustrate now what we're doing is we have a, a mixture here of THC and CBD and we're actually separating that out in time this is a time axis here and if I had a little um, jar here and mm -hmm. I collected just this time, all that would only be THC. You see that? Gotcha, yep. And if I had another jar, a separate jar, and I only collected out this, that would be then just, just CBD. CBD. So that's exactly what's happened here and here. And you can see that those are um, breakable. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's the, yes, yeah, he went for the he went for it. Couldn't it help himself. Yeah. Okay, you teed it up. All right, so there it is. Anyway, so yeah, so that's what that is. It's pretty clear. Okay, so um, where is chromatography used in hemp and marijuana processing? Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, uh, analytical uh, chromatography is used to measure like potency, purity, and identity, and that's used basically at most all of these stages. From, uh, you know, from the quarantine, you receive it, you're checking out, you know, the, maybe the farmer tells you he's got 10% and, and you measure in your lab, he's, he's actually got 5% or maybe, 12%. maybe, he's, got, maybe he's got 12% in right. there and you're, you're doing pretty good. Um, in quarantine, you're measuring things like, okay, does it free from metals? Is it free from pesticides? Sure. And you're using chromatography to do that. So, and, then, and that's the HPLC. Yeah, that's that is the HPLC, use, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. then same thing with the decarboxylation process. You would measure like the ratio of acids to, to neutrals. So again, at every step of the way, you're using some sort of chromatography, whether it's a uh, HPLC or GC, okay? But here's what we're really talking about today, and what we're going to be focusing on is, is how do we create a broad-spectrum distillate with a preparative chromatography. Okay. And uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. You can, you can feed your broad-spectrum distillate with, dis, with, with basically um, distillate. So you would feed the distillate into the broad-spectrum distillate, and you would, get, uh, you would use chromatography then to separate out the THC from the CBD. And uh, or you could you could basically crash it out in isolate and then clean it up with uh, with uh, your chromatography there. So um, you can see here what I have uh, is this this progression and that's really where it's used. That's excellent. And and just so you know out there, um, questions are coming in. They're flying in. So I just want you to know we're we've got a team that's answering a lot of those questions. We don't want to interrupt this presentation because this is a little more detailed. But uh, keep asking the questions, and we've got a team answering them as we go. Sweet. So. All right. Good deal. Um, so let me advance to the next one. So why do we need chromatography? I'm going to attempt to answer that. You see that beautiful leaf back there. Um, that's uh, all those beautiful trichromes. Trichromes. On there. Yeah, I was trying to remember called. what you called them yeah. last. The little time. little mushrooms. I little just mushrooms. say just remember the little mushrooms. Little mushrooms. They're, they're trichromes. Little resinous mushrooms, and you, you you know if you take and you squeeze the flower, your your you'll get some of that resin on your fingers, yeah. right? Yep. And it'll be a little sticky. Sticky. So um, yeah, that's where all of the cannabinoids lay in there. And the deal there is in that trichrome, you have resins, you have uh, terpenes that are made there, you have. Um, you know, different phytonutrients that are in there. There's mm -hmm. different uh, chlorophylls, for example, that are 
um, that are in there or xanthophils, and you really want to separate out all those things and, and make it pure. So that's why you need chromatography. Um, in the hemp world, okay. okay, this is an illustration of why you need to have chromatography specifically for hemp. Okay. okay? This first pie graph is for hemp, and you can see here this is an unextracted hemp, and say it's got 61% by weight biomass, and then you have cannabinoids at 12%. And this is, um, let's say that this is uh, compliant with the farm bill, so it has less than 0.03% uh, by weight THC. So this would be fit for commerce. Okay. This would be sent to the extractor to extract. Now, as soon as it gets extracted and you start talking about distillate, which is the center, um, now you're talking about, you can see how the, the concentration of THC now has increased because you removed all the water, you removed part of the waxes, you removed part of the terpenes, and now you have the biomass. So as a percentage, weight per weight, it's much greater. And here you're in co actually concentrating the THC, wow. which is exactly what extraction is supposed to do, right? Okay. Um, okay. So then when, when you want to basically remove that THC, you use chromatography or you use an isolate technique or what's called THC remediation mm -hmm. to basically remove that THC and make this, which is called broad spectrum. And you can see the broad spectrum now has gone to 0% THC or non-detect THC, and the CBD is there. So this would be fit for commerce. And in fact, a lot of people are actually um, desiring and they want the broad spectrum versus the distillate because they don't want to have the THC in there. That's right. So in this, in this slide, you've got raw. Yep. And you've got full spectrum. Full spectrum, distillate, distillate yeah. And then you have broad spectrum, broad spectrum. Distillate, which is the same, but with the THC removed. Right, exactly. Got it. And, and this arrow here is what chromatography does. Gotcha. Or, or other what are called THC remediation techniques. Okay. And there's several of them, uh, and I'll kind of go over what okay. those are. With awesome. You. Yeah. Cool. So let me kind of move on here. So, the, oh, there's a, there's a beautiful ball jar of this is a very large one liter jar we i think we had that here uh was it last week or the week yeah, before last maybe. i mean it's a really big jar um i well, think we, you made me taste it yeah we did <laughs> was it good <laughs> it's, it's, yes okay <laughs> it had is that the right answer it, well, i don't know <laughs> i don't know i don't usually go around tasting things randy like that <laughs> uh but uh, but uh yeah no it was uh basically a broad spectrum thc it's called THC ND, THC non-detected, because, um, because it's not really THC free. There's always a, a very trace amount, and um, you know, analytical chemists they see everything, yeah. and so you know, um, it's not technically correct to call it free because there always be a molecule in there. So at some point in the future, that's a good point because at some point in the future. Um, there's a the, the FTC or the FDA will be coming down on people who talk about tea free stuff. It's really tea. Yeah, non that's already that's already happened. Oh. So yeah, and they have um, you know we'd like to call it something else, but uh, the preferred term from the FDA is THC non detect. Non detect. Yeah. So use so. non detect, not free. Right. Because it's not tea right. free. Right. Right. Though they may be a couple molecules in there, or yeah. three, four molecules, or whatever. So but you can always see it. Um, just like just like uh, solvent residuals, you can always see them. You know. So whether you like it or not. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of people want to be able to use like short path distillation, or they want to use their white film distillation to get. Sure the THC out from the CBD. And it kind of makes sense. They're saying, hey, look here, I have, I have this uh, THCA here, or I have the CBG here. And you can see the boiling point's a lot higher for C THC. And then look at where CBC is and CBN. You think you'd be able to use um, distillation uh, to do this CBD THC separation because it's on boiling points, right? So sure. why couldn't you? Well, the, the answer is you, you can't um, because... It's the resolution is not so good. In other words, you're only taking out classes of molecules. So um, it's kind of like a, a broad axe. It's, it's, not, it's not a scalpel. It's not precision, okay? And you, you, everything's kind of smearing together as it comes out. So you don't really get that um, clear, concise 
uh, you know, separation the way you do with chromatography. So um, the answer to the question about whether or not you can use your short path apparatus or, um, or kind of some kind of white film distillation to do a CBD and THC separation, the answer is no, you can't do that. Um, it just it isn't, uh, hasn't, been, hasn't been worked out yet. Because they're now, pretty close. I mean, yeah. in that center column there, right? Here, yeah, they're here's CBD close. and here's THC. Yep. And typically for like molecular distillations, you have to have 20, 30 uh, degrees Celsius um, difference. And, you know, it's almost there, but it's not quite there. Hmm. If you wanted to separate out like acetone from CBD, that would be very easy to do with a short path or a white film. But um, that's because the boiling points are so different. Gotcha. Okay, so that makes sense. Yep. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's why you need to use um, chromatography. So what makes a good separations technique? You know, a lot of people have different, uh, different views about, um, you know, which technique might be good for THC re remediation. And, you know, this is kind of a list of check boxes that I go through when I think about what is a good technique. Yeah, I would say that the economical factors are probably really, really high up there, even though they're occurring low on this list. I mean, it has to meet the criteria of being viable economically, right? Absolutely. If you're not going to, if you, if it's going to cost you too much, then you can't do it at all. Exactly. So forget about it. Okay. And what I'm talking about there are the operating costs. Um, capital costs typically are not uh, impacting your bottom line to the extent that operating costs are. They're impacting it through depreciation. Okay, uh, different topic for a different time, but. Um, really, if you really want to think about, you know, improving your gross margin, you, improving your net margin, improving your profit, cash flow, really what you're talking about is making sure your operating costs are low. So Absolutely. Um, that's, I would say that's the number one thing. But, you know, there are some ne other things, you know, like you want your method to be non-toxic, right? You don't want to, you don't want to, you know, you want to have good solvent removal if you end up using the solvent remove the solvent. Yep. And then, um, you know, high mobility selectivity, and this is kind of a big deal. We're going to be talking about selectivity here in, in, in the next couple slides. So, um, so that's, that's that. So th these are the kind of the criteria for what makes a good technique. Also, low waste. You know, that's a big deal. If you have a technique Giant and you have a whole bunch of waste, um, it just isn't going to be, you know, that cost. There's a, weight, there's a cost of the waste. Yep. If, if, you're, if you have, for example, um, you know, a lot of biomass and it has a lot of solvents in it, that's a waste that you have to pay someone to get rid of. Okay. So, um, you know, you got to watch out for those costs that are waste. So what are the steps for a chromatography separation? Um, well, let me, let me kind of go through them with you. One, okay. one of them, you, I, every chromatography uh, workflow that I've ever seen always starts off with some sort of uh, sample preparation. So you have a sample, you want to make sure that it's, it's cleaned up a little bit before you put it onto your column. So it's actually the separation before the separation. Okay. And, um, and you know, sometimes, like, for example, um, you wouldn't want to, you know, if you had, I'm trying to think of a good example, but um, trying to get, oh, well, like in, with THC and CBD, that, like if you're coming out of your... Uh, system, you might have waxes in there. You want to make sure that those waxes are out before you do your chromatography. Gotcha. And that's why people use distillate uh, or isolate to feed a chromatography system. So a lot of people actually start to, they go, they crash out, they'll make isolate, and then they'll take the isolate, dissolve it, and then they'll do the chromatography. So a lot of people do that. Wow. Um, um, they filter. Um, you Typically, you want to filter it. You don't want to have a lot of, uh, you know, gunk in there or free from foreign matter and debris is what typically you want to do so typically you want to have a drain droid for that drain droid yeah because that'll get you um you know that'll take your sample drain which is droid. uh you know large it's on the order of um you know typically you're talking about um you know 20 to 100 liters at a time that you're making up right oh, wow. and you want to make sure that you have that's a uh, lot yeah it's a lot that's right? nice you want to filter it all okay so you want to have a big enough filter and then you want to um, have the right concentration of the input on the concentration. And then you want to have, uh, <laughs> and then you also want to have um, some, 
some methods uh, prepared. Here, hang on. <laughs> uh, we've had a couple of technical issues, and it's funny. And I was just pointing out the fact that his battery is running low. <laughs> his computer. So we we may or may not run through. Here we go. The yeah. the, the the slide. Okay. So anyway, we we just needed that minor thing. So yeah, minor thing. As you're asking about that, the question that I have is uh, crash out. You, you use the term crash out. Yeah. And that was when they go right from... That was when, when you take a distillate and you would crash it out. In other words, you would um, try to make isolate. Out of that. Out of the distillate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some people will like, um, they'll start off with a distillate. Mm -hmm. They'll crash out the CBD and then they'll run the, the stuff that's not crashed out. Okay. They'll run that to get rid of the THC and then they'll put them back together. Oh. So that's actually a really great way to do it. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit less, um, it's, a, it's an easier separation to do. Okay. Um, you know, the other thing would be if you wanted to uh, look only at, you know, taking that isolate, the stuff that has been crashed out and not make it so pure, and then, you know, more or less just uh, just just put that through your chromatography okay. machine. So, yeah. yeah. So um, also, so then you got to prepare your method. Yes. You need to have, make sure you have a method, okay? You've um, brought methods up before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have. If you want to learn about methods, you can go back a couple uh, weeks ago. We were talked all about methods, right? All the different variables on methods. Yes, I know. Oh, sorry, that <laughs> was me. That's good. <laughs> it was good, okay. And, uh, you know, no. all the variables that you need to but, think and it about. Is in, and it is so vital to yeah. have those methods. Yeah, so. and, and also that they're validated, right? Exactly. So, um, yeah, anyway, so you got to have the method. And that okay. typically will include a column. It'll include a solvent. It'll include, yep. um, you know, all of the, all of the parameters, you know, your temperatures, your pressures, all of that. Okay. Um, and then you run your sample and you test your fractions with HPLC. So uh, High-performance liquid chromatography. That's correct. You are correct, sir. I can say that five times really fast. <laughs> Try it. High performance liquid chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography. That's wow. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Whew. you did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. That's good. Sorry, I did, like I, did no, they take all, you off your game here? No, no, it didn't at all. Yeah. That was that was all good. Right. Good. Um, okay. Uh, so you run your sample and then you test the fractions with the HPLC. Okay. What do I mean by that? Um, let me see if I can give you an example here. Oh, that was a table. Here, I'm going to go back here. Ooh. I just want to go back through here. You're such a, a tease. I know. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, right here. Okay, this is, I, I didn't cue it up right in the presentation, but right here. Oh, yeah, right there. Sorry. Okay, those will break. Every time I see the road of apps, that's what Okay, I so, but what if I, what if I took a little sample of, of of this here yep. and I took a sample here yep. and I took a sample here yep. and I took a sample here. Those would all be like 100% pure THC, right? Yeah. What if I took a sample right here? Uh, I would say that'd be like 50-50 because both CBD and THC are there, right? right so yep. I know that w because I take these samples along this timeline here, I know when the THC is done and when the CBD begins. Gotcha. Okay. And a lot of times you would use HPLC to, to help you do that, and that's how you would take the samples and, and make it happen. So let me go forward here. So, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I just had some transition music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is, this is good. This is a good one. This is a good one. I like the sound we've had, we've had our technical difficulties, but, you know, you're going to have to get used to it if you're going to deal with HPLC. And, technical and difficulties. us. <laughs> that's true. That's it, true. As, as with Dr. John and I, and that's why I have sound effects. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then you're going to optimize, and then you're going to remove solvent from the fractions with the falling film. Okay. So you're going to have a bunch of uh, pure fractions, but you're also going to have solvent there. Um, and... You're going to want to make sure that you can get rid of that, and the falling film is a great way to get get rid of the solvent in that case. Um, you could, there's a lot of different solvents you can. Whenever use. you say falling film, I he, I hear in my head these little screaming molecules as they're falling. That that's probably what's happening. Um, Just and then throwing it out there. <laughs> what happens when they when they transition from 
for example, the little molecule transition, and like it's in the liquid and it's being pulled from the liquid. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> no, no. And it pulls out and it's pulling out and then it goes away. Oh, it's terrible. And just it's like so in the you black know, hole. we did, we oh, did a podcast word. on Falling Film. Yes, if you want to see it. We went into this in great detail. <laughs> Okay, so remove the solvent. The and then outtakes test, were pretty test, fun. Test the residuals <laughs> with uh, GC headspace. GC. A GC. Gas yeah. chromatography. All right, so there we See, go. I'm, I'm just, oh, it's a table. So here we go. We finally made it. We've, We've arrived. arrived. We made it to We've the table. Arrived. Okay, so there's lots of different ways to remediate. Okay, and I, instead of going through each of the different ways to remediate in detail, which may, uh, may be a future podcast and everybody's... Uh, they'll see what comments we get on that. They'll probably be, no way, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, column chromatography, uh, there's degradation. In other words, you can take and get rid of the C THC just by cooking it oh. and, uh, in the presence of light. Oh. And the THC will go away. Wow. But so will your CBD. That's unfortunate. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Would, wow. um, there's also liquid-liquid separations, which are basically, um, you know, partition chromatography or counterflow chromatography. They are basically liquid-liquid techniques. They don't have a column in them. Um, there's solvent techniques, essentially. And then there's the crystallization technique that we just talked about. So um, when you use this crystallization technique along with the column chromatography, you can see you're getting high, 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 high. 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 So that, that's pretty good. So that's yes. why people do that. Okay. Yeah, and you can improve your throughput, and you can improve your robustness. So that's, that's kind of the reason why, why it happens. So let me just kind of go through how I'm comparing these. Okay. Um, first of all, one of the main advantages of column chromatography over, say, uh, liquid liquid or e degradation for sure or crystallization is that you're going to get a, pr a much higher recovery. Okay. It's, it's never going to be perfect, like 100%, um, you know, because you're always losing, you know, even, even with transfers, you're losing and things like that. But um, your column chromatography, by far, is a very, very efficient technique. So if you have 100 cannabinoids coming in, you're going to get 95 out, okay? That's the kind of thing that you're, you're looking at. Um, as opposed to, like, degradation, which, which means that if you take the THC and you're like, I'm going to try to destroy you, and I'm going to put you under light, and I'm going to put you in heat, and I'm going to try to convert you over to CBN or something along those lines, which people do, um, you're, you're also going to be degrading the matrix. It's going to be like a black sludge. And also you're going to be degrading the, 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 and changing the CBD. So your CBD is going to go down. That's what happens to my self-esteem when you put me in the heated Jemco. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're trying to, trying to work your way to get out, and, uh, and I'm just to turning up the heat. I wonder how long he's going to stay in there. <laughs> okay. The we do have fun. It's all in good, good fun. <laughs> it's all in good fun. The liquid liquid uh, obviously has a, a low recovery. It's not as good as a column chromatography. And the crystallization also is not as good. You get a lot of what they call co-precipitation that happens. So um, you're not getting out, you know, 100% of the mm. CBD. You're not getting it all back, okay? okay. So you're getting less of a, uh, of a recovery. The selectivity can't be beat with column chromatography, and that's, that's a big deal because that can really drive your throughput, okay? okay. So um, selectivity really means how far of a separation can you get between your two peaks, CBD and THC, oh. okay? And like, for example, um, with your, you know, you can't really get that good separation with the distillation stuff that mm -hmm. we just talked about. Yeah. Um, so that's not a very selective technique, right? Okay. So... Um, Column chromatography, you can really get that selectivity. In other words, you can say, okay, I have, I have CBD and CBD only in this, in this can, and I have uh, THC and THC only in this, in this time frame. Okay. So it, 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 really is, it really is selective. The degradation is not selective, okay? That's because it's degrading everything, right? Mm. So that's not selective. Okay. It would be great if you could just heat it up and THC would go away into CBN. Everybody, no one would have any problem. There'd be no use for chromatography. But that would be a problem. But, but that, that would be a problem because everything is degrading. It's not selective. Liquid liquid um, has some selectivity, but you get a lot of co-precipitates or get a lot of co-extraction that's happening. Liquid liquid is a lot like uh, you know, bulk extraction, essentially. Um, and then same thing with the crystallization. Um, you get a high selectivity with crystallization. Um, 
you know, you can, but it's not very, the recovery is not so hot. Mm. So you get a high selectivity, but the recovery is not hot. So, gotcha. okay. Um, so these, this selectivity here really drives a throughput. How much can you put through, you, through per unit time? So here you have a high throughput here for the column chromatography. And some people would say, well, look, I don't, I don't agree with that at all because, uh, because my chromatography unit is really slow. Well, you just have the wrong chromatography unit, or you have something that's too small for what you're trying to do, so you just need to get a bigger unit, okay? Bigger, better, faster, stronger. Sounds good. Yeah. And, um, you know, on the throughput, you know, with the degradation, the liquid, and the crystallization, those are all like stir pot techniques. So you just get a big pot, and Cold you put drink. all your stuff in there, <laughs> you stir it, you know, you, you double, control the temperature. Double toilet yeah. and treble. Um, liquid, liquid, th there are pieces of equipment that do centrifuges, and they have uh, partitioning units, and uh, they call their Craig machines is what they call those. Um, there's, there are those uh, machines out there, but um, they're, you know, I don't know about, I guess I don't know the exact throughput number for a CPC machine, so I'd have to check that out. Mm. But, but uh, they can be pretty high, nonetheless. Um, and then the cost per gram. The reason I have the cost per gram for column chromatography is so low is because the recovery is so high. Think about it. You're starting with a distillate. Right, mm -hmm. and if you the the more distillate you lose, I mean that's really costing you a lot because it's a highly refined. Absolutely. If you're talking about losing, you know, two percent of a hemp biomass, okay, that probably doesn't make any difference because there's hardly any. You're not losing hardly anything. Right. But when you're talking about losing, you know, five and ten and twenty percent of a highly refined uh, oil like distillate. Those costs are very important that you th that you are uh, keep those in mind. So that's why I have it such a low low number there. It's a low cost per gram because the recovery is so high, as opposed to degradation, which is a. It seems like it would be super simple, right, and mm -hmm. super un, not very costly, because um, you know you're just heating it up mm -hmm. on a hot plate. How simple that could be. That doesn't cost a lot, right? No, but you're you're degrading all of the product that you just made. Uh, so that that's no good and the same thing here with the uh, liquid liquid and the crystallization um, these ones are primarily driven by solvent costs so um, mm. that's the one thing now this also can be driven by a high solvent cost if you don't have um, the pier 99 mm. the pier 99 is a is a piece of equipment that has an automatic recycler to it so it recycles all the solvents so that's pretty sweet wow um you can see here that column chromatography gets a medium score for the robustness. And what that means is that uh, you're, you know, if you do what they call injections on the column and you continuously repeat injections again and again and again to try to do more and more separations over time, um, you know, eventually that column is going to kind of wear out. Sure. Okay, and you need to change the column. I, with our particular unit that we have on the Pier 99, you can the user can go ahead and change that out on his own. So he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to call us and order another computer, or sorry, another, another column. He doesn't have to order. He can just come, he can order the particles from us, and we'll send him the particles, and he can just go ahead and... and so he basically repacks the column. Yeah, he repacks the column himself, wow. yeah, rather than going back to the manufacturer. Because it's very inconvenient and expensive. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of people are trying to come up with very selective materials. I'm kind of in that business myself because of the Carbon X. But with the selective materials, extremely selective materials, what they're asking for is very, very high um, costs of your column. So you have like the molecularly imprinted columns would be one example. Um, I, I, in fact, I, back in 2014, I was talking about um, molecularly imprinted columns as being a possibility. The issue with that is just, um, it just, it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. I can't get up to high pressures with it. Uh, you know, there's, the, you know, polymeric supports, things like that, that really limit the technique. Mm -hmm. Technique. So, and of course, we were always interested in doing um, CO2. So, um, here we got degradation, uh, robustness. Oh, this liquid, liquid, and crystallization. It's pretty high the robustness because you're just talking about stirred vessels, mm -hmm. so they're very robust. Sure. And uh, the liquid, liquid partitioning chromatography. Um, you know, you really don't have, um, you know, like the possibility of a column going out. Gotcha. So that's why, that's why the robustness is. But I would, the robustness scores are the way they are. But I would say overall, I give column chromatography pretty high scores on the recovery selectivity and throughput. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And um, you got to really be careful about the robustness. So if you do really good sample preparation, your columns are going to be pretty robust, and that's going to reduce your cost for changing out your columns. Gotcha. So that, that's the main thing. And the reason I have the cost per gram so low is because, in my view, uh, and if you run the numbers, it's absolutely true, the cost of really this recovery is really what's driving a lot of the cost. Wow. So if you can't recover a very highly refined distillate in a very, uh, you know, to 95% plus, you're, you're just throwing away a lot of money. So, so the advantages on column is really in that recovery because it's the only one listed at, that rates at high. Right. Right? Right, right. Okay. Yeah, so that, but the, the negative to that obviously is the, is the robustness. So there's a trade-off. Every one of these different techniques has a trade-off. And you can see like a, the degradation, I don't know anybody who would do that. But it is really simple. You take a beaker, you put it in there, you put it on a hot plate, and there you go. But you've been it's able get rid to of the THC. <laughs> yeah, but in traditional column chromatography, that robustness would be medium. But because you have the ability to repack yourself, yeah. you've lowered that cost. Lower the cost dramatically, and then you can also the particles themselves can be reconditioned. So you can have a, a program and, and recondition those particles too. Which so. makes it more robust. Yeah. Which it does. makes the pure ninety nine yeah. even higher. Okay. Yeah. Good. Cool. So we have we have um, you know, I would say that Yes, but if you're talking about comparing it to a, a technique yes. that it, that does not have any column at all, yeah. it, it it just you yeah. can't. It's not that it's not. Uh, gotcha. So it does have that thing Understood. where you do have to do some extra steps to take care of the column. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the way I look at it. Okay. Um, Thank you for that table. Yeah, no problem. Brilliant. So look at here. This is the this is the this is the try, this is the try constraint. The tray, the tray constraint. The tray, tray constraint. Yeah. So the trio of constraints. Yeah, recovery, selectivity, and speed. It's like if you can get, you'll pick two. You can't have three. Okay. So you want high recovery and speed, you're going to sacrifice selectivity. If you want selectivity and speed, you're going to sacrifice recovery. Uh, so this is, this is what you, in any of the techniques I just talked about. What if we enter the fourth dimension? Ooh, the fourth dimension. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> 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 all right. You uh, get it all here, folks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, the fourth dimension. Okay. Um, the purity of the input materials, first pass versus second pass. So these are factors that uh, affect the throughput. Everybody wants to know, how much can I put through it? Sure. Okay. Um, believe it or not, we have calculators for this. Really? Yes, we do. Where would those be? <laughs> They're not online. <laughs> uh, but we, we are making them, so we'll put them up for you guys. So That's awesome. Um, but, you know, it, it's actually a, a simple it's simple math, and if you follow our methods and everything, which we give you, um, you're going to be doing a certain throughput, okay? Um, the amount of THC in the input... Well, it's simple math for doctor chromatography. Well, okay, well, whatever. But yeah. here's the things that can affect it, okay? If you don't, like, we, there's some things that we can't control, right, mm -hmm. with our methods. Like, we can't control the purity of the input materials, right? Yeah. Can't do it. Uh, we can't control the amount of THC in the input material. So the more THC, you know, generally the slower you're going to go. Yeah, you bet. Okay, so, um, and that really depends on the method that you're running and all of that. Okay, the selectivity of the method of the separation for THC and CBD. You can change, um, you know, for example, your solvent composition and, and separate out those a little bit more, but you're going to sacrifice speed. So, you know, you can, t you can trade off. Uh, you can trade off selectivity for speed, and you can trade off selectivity for um, sp uh, speed and recovery. Or you can think of this recovery as purity also. Okay. So that would be another way to think about it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that, I, that, I know. want all three. <laughs> it's impossible. I want Pick two. All three. <laughs> okay, so if we were to choose recovery and selectivity, yeah. and how, how long would it take to remediate a uh, 7% THC. Uh, how much? Well, because um, you would be doing, you know, you'd, you'd be injecting several hundred grams per, per, you know, per injection. Okay. And, you know, your runs take anywhere from three to five minutes. So, oh, wow. yeah, so it's, it's For constantly going through. Times that many. Yeah, yeah right. Oh. So there's a, and then depending on how many shifts you're running and how much, uh, what the percentage of THC is in there. Okay. Um, if there's a lot of THC, it'll be more than five minutes in okay. time, okay? Um, if it's a little tiny bit of THC, all you have to do is slice off a, a little tiny bit of THC and get rid of it, then 
then you can do a lot faster. Okay. So there, there's a continuous set of trade-offs. A lot of people want to, they're like, okay, well, just give me a number. Well, it's actually a range of numbers, and mm -hmm. it really depends on what you put into it. So input equals output. So then they want to model all the inputs and outputs. That's what, kind of what we do in that sure. calculator for you. Right. Give you ranges, um, which is probably what you need, yeah. All right, yep. high performance liquid chromatography, yeah. so and we're talking about chromatography columns. Oh, look at here! I even have some method stuff on here. Oh, what is a chromatography method? Oh, that's exactly what we need. Okay, so now we were just talking about methods and how to optimize them. Obviously, you have your technique, which is chosen. You got your gas, gas, the gas liquid. In this case, we're doing liquid liquid separations with the column chromatography. Um, we 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 make sure that it passes our criteria for economics, right? And yep. make sure that it's all all set for our residuals and our purity. Um, we choose our solvent. We develop our method. Then, then there's some things that we need to do after that. We run it. Um, we make sure that the, all the variables are, are selected, the time, temperature, pressure cycles, all that stuff. Uh, we make sure that we have enough selectivity for the throughput that we want. And then we have a method, and we test its reproducibility and reliability. And then that method becomes validated. Wow. So that, that's basically what a chromatographer is trained to do. And what we have done for you guys is we've, we've more or less done all of these steps. These techniques are all chosen for you. The method has been developed. The, the variables have been selected. And we basically stop right here. You have to validate your own method. Okay. Because a, a lot of people have their own method, um, you know, cri validation criteria. And uh, has specifically something to do with your quality system. Okay. So, um, you know, that's how that works. So it should be, it should be pretty good. Anyway, I don't think we're going to go over this. We went over this last week, um, but this is kind of the idea of how you may tailor uh, and some of the other reasons why you may want to do separations in the cannabinoid or the hemp world. Sure. And that is to take out all the other different, chrome, uh, different cannabinoids, separate them out, and then put them together into an engineered, gotcha. uh, like a tincture or something like that. So in this case, you can, if you have pure content of pure THC, pure CBD, pure CBN, pure CBC, pure terpenes, you can now create, um, uh, you know, you can create um, basically a, an engineered component, you know what I mean? Custom formulations. Custom formulations, yeah. So it's kind of the future, I think, and you're still, uh, because you're getting a lot of the phytonutrients that co-elute with the plant, you're still maintaining a lot of the plant. It's not like powder isolate. So, yeah, and that's, that's basically all I had here other than, um, let me see here. Yeah, and then here's some beautiful pictures and some formulations. So that's per it. D. Yeah. This was awesome. Yeah. I thanks. I I learned a lot today. Here, you you, you earned a hundred oh, well, million you. dollars. Thank you. Thank okay, you. so you earned that. Here, back. I, but I owe you a hundred million, so you can take it back. Oh, that's right. Awesome. <laughs> <I> got it. <laughs> okay, All so right. I'm gonna stop the screen stop share. Stop the screen share. That's good. So we covered a whole bunch of stuff. We talked about THC remediation. We talked about, we talked a little bit about the difference between T free and T non detect. Yes, because um, again, T there's always some THC in this, so it's non detect is the terminology you really want to use. Right. We've talked about the difference between uh, T free, t you know, full spectrum and broad spectrum. Right. We talked about T free hemp distillate, which is. Right, tea-free hemp distillate is a chromatography, per, you know, basically um, treated distillate. Yeah, yeah, love it. And then we talked about how does chromatography enable designer formulations because you can dial it in. Yeah, right. Yeah, I absolutely. like it. All right, that's that's good. We and then oh, what we didn't talk about was how to tailor formulations for specific indications. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So. Um, yeah, okay, so for example... That question came in, and so we yeah. want to talk about that a yeah, little bit. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. So we, we kind of... Um, I had a slide last week uh, that really was... Uh, really talked about the different cannabinoids and how they would really address uh, different disease states or different indications. Um, if you are in the business of, of uh, selling CBD... You cannot make any claims, no any claims. medical claims Correct. for any indication unless you have um, been approved uh, under an NDA, which is a, a new drug uh, application with the FDA. Okay. But, um, you know, everybody knows that 
um, it has certain benefits for different things. Sure. Uh, we know one of the main side effects of, for example, CBD is sleep. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will take CBD as a, a natural way to, you know, help them sleep. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Which is what everybody's doing right now. After we get the, okay, we need, we need a caffeine jolt now that we got. Uh, I think that happened a little <laughs> bit when we were in our R&D lab. Uh, making our own yeah. <laughs> we were potions we were we we were smoking wasn't it oh we were smoking we did we did a lot we yeah. made our own concoctions of and tinctures the best ever uh yeah and by the way you know i've kind of been mulling over the idea of making like a um a do-it-yourself kind of kit wouldn't that be fun <laughs> would you guys like that I, I, yeah like Okay, a little little bottle of um, isolate, a little bottle of distillate, a little bottle of broad, broad spectrum, you know, <laughs> along with some different flavors and some media and stuff like that. You know, kind of like a, um, what do they have those, like, connoisseur kits or um, sommelier <laughs> kits for wine? I love it. Why not? Yeah, a tasting kit. Tasting, a tasting kit. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I think we should do that. Why not? I like it. You guys like that? I don't know. Who's in? Oh. Nobody's answering. Yeah. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> Crickets. So, okay, okay. That, uh, that just goes, I'll chalk it up to another one of my failed business plans. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's great. Uh, okay. No, I, I love this. Everything we talked about with chromatography, I learned a ton. And making sure, I mean, the biggest thing that I learned is, you know, that you're always doing high performance liquid chromatography as you're testing for potency right. throughout every step in the process, right. whether you're a grower, whether you're a processor at all, that's what you need to know. Yeah. So you need to have that in your facility. Uh, it doesn't make sense to send out like in process samples uh, is, is a lot different than, for example, uh, you know, samples that you'd send out because you have just made a formulation and you want to get a test. Right. Okay, because a lot of times the in-process samples are the ones that you want to know, okay, is it decarboxylated or not? Or is my extraction as efficient as I thought it sure. was? Or, it, you know, it do, is, are there cannabinoids in my residual, uh, in my, you know, distillate? Yeah. I want to make sure that I'm tr kind of tracking those down, making sure they're not going offline from a process standpoint. So, sure. yeah, that's what we use, uh, chromatography yeah. throughout our system. We have a laboratory here. We do hundreds of samples a day. We do, yeah, because it doesn't know. shut you down. You're not waiting for other tests. So nope. that HPLC is really it's a workhorse. Boom, boom, potency, potency, potency. That's yeah. what that does. Yeah. And when you need more, then you jump into a gas chromatography or a larger right. system, or send it out to a third party lab right. to do your um, final testing. Final testing. Final which would testing. Yeah. Give you pesticides. It right. Would give you metals. It would give right. you all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And sometimes you know, like we have, uh, we do pesticides and metals here too, along with. Uh, we do, um, you know, solvents and things like that. I think it does make sense for someone who's doing, you know, um, if you have a solvent-based uh, extraction technique, uh, you should have a GC headspace in your facility. Mm. Just because so you, you know, okay, hey, look, I, I don't want to send out samples to customers without knowing, number one. And I don't want to send out samples to, for example, even to the, um, you know, to the laboratory and then have them not pass it. Right, so I'd rather ha I'd rather know before I send it out. Yeah, so that's well, a good thing to have. And I think that that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I, this was a great show. Well done. All right. Well, thank you. Well done. Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, coming through. Uh, there, there will be a replay. Make sure you invite your your friends. Uh, and we've got I, we covered all of these questions. There's more questions still coming in. Thank you for that. You're and good. you know, our team has been frantically busy, busy, busy answering away so that's good uh, make sure you set up a cbd jam session if you've got something very you know there's there's a there's an embedded base out there who's been around for years okay and right. you're running your facilities and you're thinking about what do i do for chromatography what's that next thing how do i do custom formulations this is what you want to do you can yeah. set up a cbd jam session with us anytime we can go through answer any of your questions look at those show right. you where those calculators are everything yep. Yeah, right, exactly. So, so, and we're, you know, there's nothing too small. Again, even our CBD jam sessions, ask anything. Our team is ready to answer that. Yeah. So. Yeah, we, we like to interact with you. Um, you know, we're, we're, we got a new guide coming out um, on solvent removal, oh, which is kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I think we're, yeah. And then our product tours are coming out. They didn't get launched this week yet. <laughs> and I w I've been really like chomping at the bit for them, but they'll be, they'll be here. 
product tours. And we do have our live tour, which is nice. But then if we spend some time one on one with each one piece of equipment, that's really been helpful for people, whether they use our gear or not. Yeah. It's really helps from a learning perspective. What is the foaming film? What is the wipe film technology? What is what? How do you do a winterization? And yeah. And how, how do you do, do filtration I, and dewaxing? How, how do, do I make a formulation? How do I make a formulation? Yeah. How do I make a tincture? What What do I use? Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's the difference between supercritical and subcritical yeah, extraction? We've, we've been we've been talking about all this stuff, haven't we? I know. Yeah, it's been good. I know my my brain hurts. <laughs> I'm gonna have to bring one of those Monty Python head wraps. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> no, we're good.